So this video is gonna be a tell-all video about everything that I know about bending, okay? Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Aisha G or whatever, and welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been a while, and as you can probably see through the reflection behind me, I am sitting outside. So I have officially moved to Mexico and I'm not talking about the state in the United States, New Mexico. I mean the actual country. I've literally moved to the country of Mexico. And I'm so ready to give y'all so much content from me being in Mexico and how I'm liking it, the things that I'm learning. So I felt like in order to bring you guys new content, I wanted to go ahead and put this video out so that it could just be out there. I'm not gonna make this introduction too long. Just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. So I have written a ebook about the vending business and how to start your own vending business. And it's titled, How to Start a Vending Business. I'm gonna be taking you guys through my ebook a little bit but I won't be going in too in debt. You know, if you want all the tea and all the information, you will definitely have to check out my ebook and the information will be down below. And if it's not, make sure you hit me up and I got you. So let's get into it. We're gonna start from the beginning of me starting my vending business and I'm gonna walk you guys all the way through and give you all the tips, the tea and everything about what I did. Since I have started my vending business, um, I learned a lot. So I wish that I would have done a few things differently. It's like one of those things where if I knew then what I know now, things would have been totally different. But now that I know, I want to share the information with y'all. So first, as you saw in my Start My First Business Journey video, which I will link at the top, I was ready to start my vending business. I had already said, okay, yes, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm ready, let's go. So I came up with my name and I made my own logo using the Canva app. People say Canva is not good for making logos because of like some type of trademarking or some type of um, some type of something like later on you can get, you know, somebody can find you or something like that. But that's what I did. I'm, this video is not to tell nobody you do this, but I'm just telling you what I did and how I started mine. So I made my logo on Canva and it was completely free. And then after that, I needed business cards and I also needed flyers. So I also made my business flyers on Canva also for the free. And I used a website called Zazzle to make my business cards, which was really simple. Personally, I'm kind of creative, so I don't mind, you know, making, designing my own business cards and designing my own flyers. That's just what I do, so it was cool. So Zazzle would give you 100 business cards of however you want it for about $30, $33. And usually they have like some type of promo code or something that you can put inside the little discount bar and take another 20% off if you're a new client or whatever, whatever. So check out Zazzle if you need business cards and you're gonna be good. So from there, um, I went through the business structure part of, okay, I need to register my business as a this, as a this. And of course you can see that my business is the LLC by the name of it, Treat Yourself Goods and Services LLC. It's registered in the state of Texas. I'm not gonna really get into like the business structure. I have a whole little section in my ebook about starting your business structure and it tells you the steps. It tells you where you need to go. It breaks down the names and the descriptions of the different business structures and all of that. And also in that same section, it talks about creating your business structure, how to do it. And it also talks about business banking and how to set up your business bank account. All of that is in my ebook. Make sure you check it out if you need more information about that. So after I had my, after I had my business structure all set up, I then had to figure out where am I gonna, you know, get my vending machines from. And I know I spoke about this in my how to start a vending machine business um, video. And basically you just, you know, what I did, I personally just went on Google and Google be expensive, they be taxing sometimes. So you can use other, I use um, OfferUp, I use Craigslist, I use Facebook Marketplace and Facebook Marketplace is usually where I, bought most of my machines what i did was i found machines and they were broken like they did not work the way that i wanted them to work 
So what I did was I had to find a mechanic in my city to fix machines up, refurbish them, if that, as they would say. And I was able to sell those machines for more profit. So I was able to sell a, a few of those machines for more profit to buy more machines, like better machines and stuff. But the machines that I had, <clears throat> some of the machines that I bought, you know, they were just ready to go. I placed a few of them in different places or I would sell it or use it for parts. There's so many things that you can do with machines that you can, you know, to maximize your investment. I'll say that. Um, what else? Let me look at my book. Let me go to the ebook, see, see what else we did. In my ebook, I also talk about the startup cost of starting your business and the types of machines. A lot of people feel like there's only a snack machine or there's only a drink machine. There are so many machines. like So don't only limit yourself to snack machines and drink machines because there's so many other machines out there. So when it comes to startup costs, this is one thing that I wish that I would have known in the beginning. If I was to do it all over again, I definitely would have done this differently. I would have, you know, used my business structure to build business credit and I would have used that business credit money to pay for vending machines versus buying them like broken down and having to get them fixed because that stuff costs money. Like, yeah, you would get your vending machine for a little cheap price. You can buy, buy find a vending machine for about four or $500, but you may spend another 200 to $300 getting it fixed up because you gotta pay for the labor and you gotta do other stuff. So, I mean, it all kinds of balance out. I wish that I would have went that route. Now that I know, and I would have done, if I would have done it again, I would have done that. Like started business credit and bought machines from there because when I started, we'll get into that later. All right, so the next thing, um, see, this is what I was just about to talk about, card readers. When I first started, I was like, I want a machine with a card reader. I want one, you know, just because it looked cute. It's cute. You know, I'm like, I want my stuff to be A1, top of notch. But what I found out is that first off, all vending machines are not card reader capable. So if you're buying a little cheap old machine from 2003 and you're trying to refurbish it and put a card reader on it, you have to be sure that that machine is card reader capable. So to do that, what I used to do is I would just, when I found a machine, I would call my um, my mechanic like, hey, can you come check this machine out for me? Make sure, you know, a card reader can go on this. And yeah, if he say yes, then that's a good purchase. If he say no, then if, if a card reader is what you want, you have to find another machine. I definitely talk about why I feel like it's important to shop locally for vending machines. And like I said, I live in Houston, so I found a vending store in Houston. I speak about that in my ebook, but I'm gonna say this. So when I say, you know, shop locally for vending machines, I say that because it's very difficult. Ooh, oh my goodness, that was a big bird, y'all. Ooh, okay. I say that because it's gonna be so much, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. I know when I used to, you know, sell the machines, everybody, people would hit me up like, hey, I live in Louisiana. Hey, I live in Oklahoma. I need a vending machine. And I'm like, it's better for you to just shop locally. Find a vending machine in your city and just work on that versus trying to ship a machine from another state. Because first off, you're gonna pay to, you know, haul it to the next state, which could be a hundred, could be hundreds to thousands of dollars because the weight of the machine is so heavy and then the distance. And also you gotta think about what if something breaks in transit? What if one of your shelves break or your glass on your snack machine break if it's a glass front? You gotta think about stuff like that because then you still have to pay for that. And it's like, it brings a $200 machine that you found in another state, add on the, the distance, add on the gas, add on the driver, add on the, the weight. You're almost at $1,000 and say something break and then you still have to pay to fix that. And it's just, it, just don't, it, it just don't add up, honestly. So I would say just find something locally on the platforms that I spoke about or you know a vending machine shop. If you wanna go that route, if you wanna start at the top, start find a store. They might charge you maybe 14, 12, 14, $2,000 for a machine. But if you got it and that's where you wanna start, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't got it and you wanna start a little bit smaller, as I did, I would say, you know, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, 
offer up stuff like that all right so moving along i talk about um different ways to secure your location a few things that you can do um you can hire a locator a locator will locate it'll she'll basically say okay i'll call around for you i'll or whatever however they do it i never use a locator but it's a smart idea i thought about it i ain't gonna lie now i just thought about it a few times because um i just feel like shoot if you already know the locations or you already got the connects let me just hire you and put my machine somewhere you feel me one thing that I did do is I did buy a complete location. So my first full line location was bought as a complete location. So I got two machines, a snack machine and a drink machine. The machines were already functioning. They were already making money, kinda. They were already kinda making money, but they were already able to make money and they were there. So I'm like, shoes. And it was at a truck stop. So I was like, okay. Let me just try this out, which I'm glad I did, you know. Let me just buy the whole location. And I did, it was fun, it was cool. So the best vending location, you wanna look for high foot traffic locations, such as apartment complexes. I went to a few of those. I feel like they are always looking for vending machines, and but you just have to be careful to put them in good location, like good areas, because what you don't want is to place your machine in an apartment complex and they tear your stuff up and they, your machine don't work no more because somebody can, then kicked it or the kids then like, like pushed it over or something. That's not what you want. So apartment complexes, beauty and barbershops, after school centers, hotel and motels, tire and automotive shops, gyms, office buildings, laundromats, trucks slash bus stops, Recreation centers, which they're really good recreation center. If you can get, if you can find a recreation center without a vending machine, try that. For sure. Um, schools and retail store break rooms. Somebody actually told me about the um, store, the retail store break room. She was like, she worked at a Dillard's or a Sears or something, and they didn't have no like no snacks and stuff, and they had to leave the building to go somewhere else. When it comes to vending, one thing you want to try to do is to solve the problem of whatever the problem is. So if they're like, man, we always gotta leave the building to go get some food, that's perfect. That's a good way to promote your business to these business owners, say, hey, you know, I know you don't want your employees to have to leave the building on break to go get food. They can just stay here with my vending machines right there. You know what I'm saying? Nah, but that's what, um, that's something you could do. And moving on, a lot of people always ask me, so what do I say when I go up to them? Like, like what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? I mean, I'm not going to give you exactly what I put in the ebook. That's for you to find out. But I will say something like, hi, my name's Aisha. I'm the owner of blah, 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 blah. And I was, you know, interested in doing some business with you. I would love to sit down and talk to you about this, 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 and how I can, that, 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 that. Tell them what you're trying to do, tell them who you are, what you represent, how you can help them out, how you can solve a problem, and maybe they say yes, maybe they say no, but don't worry if they say no, it's okay. Once you've gotten the, the machines and you got the locations and you found somebody to say, oh yes, I'm so happy to have your machines in my, in my business, you're like, okay, now I gotta, pick up this big ass vending machine and I gotta move it to another place. How am I gonna do that? You need to hire machine movers. There are specific companies that only move vending machines and big appliances like refrigerators and stuff like that. That's who you wanna talk to because they have what you need. In my ebook, I do give you a few pictures of if you want to try to move the machine yourself, some of the tools that you would need to do that. But, um, I definitely would say do your research before you try to move some machines because I even did a, a YouTube video and said, oh, um, this is how you move machines, y'all. After that video, my back was hurting, my legs was hurting, and I learned, I was like, yeah, this ain't it, okay? So my way was to just find machine movers and just have them move it for me because it was just so much easier and I'm just like, $70, $80 is nothing compared to my back being hurt for two and three days. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and pay them 
move my machines to where they need to move them to. But the thing about it is you always want to keep your contacts because just because you, you know, found this guy this time, he might be busy next time. So you got to build up your roster. To find vending machine movers, usually it's kind of simple and kind of easy. Sometimes they just reach out to you. But if you are looking for somebody and you can't find them, I would definitely say just go to where I look for everything else at, Instagram or Facebook Marketplace. Usually where the vending machines are in the Facebook Marketplace world, um, there are people who's like, oh, I can you know move your machines for you type stuff. And you just click on a little ad, contact them, and that's how I found mine. And some of them actually you know reached out to me. So either way, you definitely gonna need a machine mover because those machines are heavy. Who about to do that by themselves? Don't try it, don't. All right, so I also speak about insurance, um, having insurance for your vending machine business. I won't go too much into that, but that is a section in my ebook if you're interested in the insurance part. I did a little research and this is what I came up with. So I hope you guys check that out. And then next, um, location versus machine which one should you do first should you buy the location should you buy the machine and then i talk about pricing the products and choosing the best products and that's about it so let's talk about those things a little bit and then we're just gonna cut this video off so when it comes to buying the products that you need and pricing them the way that they should be priced i say just you know, that's something that you would have to do on your own because you have to know where your location is, what type of customers your, your vending machine will have, and you know, you gotta kinda know about them. You gotta know your target audience. I know a lot of people probably in business, they always hear the target audience, but that's just something you have to do. For example, like I bought vending machines that were already in location, and if in this location, it was a truck, truck stop, and so, it didn't click to me until after I was selling that location that I should have done that that location so much differently. So what happened was when I got the location, it, it already had sodas and it had snacks, it had chips, whatever. And I changed up the products a little bit, but even when I changed up the product, I still really wasn't selling, nobody was really buying. So I literally had to ask them like, what type of stuff do y'all like? So in that location, I was selling to the employees that used to work there, truck drivers that used to stop there sometimes on their way in to the city, on the way out to the city. And yeah, that's about it. So all the little snacks that I used to have, like animal crackers and fruit snacks and stuff like that, that stuff did not sell. And I had to realize like, why didn't it sell? And it's because I'm not selling to kids. That would have been perfect if I was at a recreation center, if I was at a school or something like that. But since I'm selling to grown men and grown women, I need to change the product. And another thing is in that location and around that location, it was usually just Hispanics and people of the, the Hispanic and the Mexican like um, descent. So I, I'm like, why are they not, you know, why are they not buying this stuff? And I asked them, so what type of stuff do y'all like? And they was like, we like hot Cheetos, we like Takis, we like, and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay. So guess what happened? I went to the Sam's Club and I bought everything they said they liked. I put it in the machine and it started selling y'all. Things start selling. So you literally just have to know your target. Like you wanna, you have to know who you want to buy from you and you wanna know, you know, what they'll pay for it and all of that. But that's how I choose my products and I price my products and that's what I do. What I should have done was, I should have went in and ask them like, what type of stuff do y'all like? And even if you don't ask them, you can always like put a little note card on the vending machine or something like, please list your favorite snacks here type shit and then see what they do. So the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is location versus machine. This is a, one of the topics in my ebook that I definitely have to put in here because it's very important. Everybody asks me, so who should I get my location first or should I do my machine first? And me personally, I feel as though I did my, I did it all wrong. I feel like I should have found the location first and then bought my machines. Because what happened was, usually I would just be like, hey, okay, I'm just gonna have three machines. And I lived in a apartment at the time that I was doing the vending stuff. So I didn't have the space to just, you know, hold all my machines in on a second floor apartment. Like that didn't make sense. 
So I had to buy a storage, like a public storage, and I would just put all my machines there. So I have different machines in my in my storage, and I'm paying for this every month about $60, $70, which is coming out of my profit. I'm like, what am I gonna do with these machines that I have in the storage? I need to place them. So then I started looking for places to place. So I would get a, a place and they're like, okay, well, we just want a drink machine. I'm like, okay, cool. I got a drink machine. Y'all, why the machine would be too big or wouldn't be able to fit in a door or, you know, it wouldn't be the one that they liked or whatever, or they didn't want this type of drink machine. They wanted another type of drink machine. When I started noticing that, I'm like, okay, this happened too many times. One time I had a barbershop that wanted a drink machine, but the machine that I had in my storage would not fit through the door. And I feel like, like that's the result of buying the machines first and then, finding the location because when you have these machines and you just have them sitting and they're not making no money you like okay now i gotta find a location but when you find a location and that machine can't fit in there anyway it's like you still in the same spot so i say find your location you measure the door the the entrance you measure the spot that it's going to be in you make sure that you know what you're looking for, what type of machine you're looking for. You go find that machine that fits the dimension, the dimensions that can fit through the door, the space that you're given and all of that. You find that. With that, those notes, you go find a machine that fits that. So me personally, I would say learn from my mistakes and don't buy your machines first. Always look for location first and then you can tailor your machine to that location. I hope you guys understood that but I feel like it's very important. That's a mistake that I've made and I don't want y'all to make it. The last thing I talk about in my ebook is the word no. Just because one business says no, don't mean that it's gonna be no forever. One person say no, okay, go, to, go next door. Next door might say yes. You know, you just never know. That is the end of my ebook. This is definitely a good investment. When I started my vending machine business, I bought an ebook. That ebook really, really helped me. It kind of taught me everything that I knew. So I know that my ebook can definitely help you out. If you're interested, make sure you hit me up for it. And with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video now. I appreciate all the support that I got when I was doing the vending business. But I feel like now, especially because I've moved to another country, it's time for me to start putting out different types of content. I never started my YouTube channel for vending um, videos. I did start my YouTube channel to show what I'm doing in my life. And at that time, I was doing vending every day, so it just made sense. But now that I'm not doing vending, I wanna start showing y'all what I be up to because I don't feel like I should be restricted to just being in videos. I will hope that you guys will stick around and you know, still enjoy my videos, enjoy my content because I appreciate everything. Y'all been rocking with me for a while, you know? And the numbers show it. So this video was a big thank you to everybody who's been rocking with my vending videos for a long time. I hope that you learned something and I hope that I answered some questions that you had. If you have any more questions, make sure you leave those below in the comment section, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel also so you won't miss any other content that I got coming. Like I said, this is a big thank you video to everybody who's been rocking with me. I hope that I answered a question or two that you had about vending. I tried to make this video real simple. It's like a tell all video because now I feel so free. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I got that off my brain. But until next time guys, be sure to let me know if you enjoyed this video and be sure to let me know if you learned something. Until next time, bye.